Have you ever felt insecure? We've all felt a lack of validation in our lives at one point or another. In those low moments, we often turn every which way to find something to prove that we have value. But like the woman in today's story, we tend to look in the wrong place. Let's dive in. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. Yes, and that includes sound effects. Just a heads up, the content in today's episode may not be appropriate for our younger listeners. I'm Timothy Gregory, bringing you the story of a woman who grew up seeking emotional and physical security. But what she found was the exact opposite. We'll see how this insecurity was turned around in today's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. Also, you want to stick around because later we are going to give the rest of you an opportunity to enter yet another sweepstakes drawing for a prize. No, it's not a cash prize, but it is a prize, and I think it's a prize that you are really going to like if we draw your name. But first, let's get to it, folks. Part one of the true story of Cynthia Wenz. <clears throat> this is a committee of the Texas State Legislature. We're here today to hear testimonies of House Bill 15 that would require Texas abortion providers to perform sonograms one to three days prior to a woman's procedure. It will require the monitor screen be turned so mothers can view the unborn child and have its physical features described. Along with that, Mothers are to receive a list of local health care providers who'd provide pregnancy and labor and delivery care. Uh, here we are. Uh, yes, we'd like to invite Ms. Cynthia Wenz to the podium for her testimony. Be right back. Psst, Mom, can I walk up with you? Uh, honey, do what you feel the Lord is leading you to do. I stood before the Texas State Legislature, hoping I wouldn't sweat through my clothes. I gripped the wooden podium and felt the Holy Spirit filling me with peace. And yet on the inside, I was about to bear my soul, all my shame with my family in tow. I had already heard many testimonies, both for and against abortion rights. But I had five minutes to speak, and I wasn't there to enter the abortion debate. I was there to tell my story. I've always said if an artist sketched a painting of my childhood, it'd feature a vibrant, creative, active, and adorable four-year-old dancing on top of a Volkswagen bug on 16th Street in South Philly. My dad was old Italian, down to the cigar and talking with a thick accent. Hey, you know, Sin, how you doing? <laughs> like a scene out of the movies. A young bride hailing from a similar Italian family. My mother had it made with her home on a beautiful row, her strapping husband and three kids. My parents made for an amazing young couple in love and deeply connected to us kids. But as I grew older, things would change. What are you doing, Sin? Can I sit with you? No. I'm reading the paper. Will I have to go to mass? Of course. Run along before it starts. But you're not coming. Nanny is with you, is she not? Yeah, but... So you got your sister and brother and grandmother to sit with. Go! Hmm. We took our faith seriously, or more precisely, Nanny, who lived with us, did. Which was good, considering how much comforting I'd need, being I was plagued with night terrors. She was always there, and I thought she'd always be. Based on her book with David Gregory Healed for Life, here's part one of the true story of Cynthia Wenz, right now on Unshackled. No, please, no! Sweetie, sweetie, wake up! <laughs> Cindy, Cindy! Oh, Nanny! Nanny, it was such an awful dream! Oh, oh honey, just pray to the Lord. Our Father, which art in the heaven, remember? Yeah. Okay. The Lord be with you. Sleep better, dear. 
Through Nanny's prayers and guidance, I always knew God had His presence in my life. From the very beginning, God put a desire in my heart for Him. My heart longed, as every young girl's must, for the love of a prince, whether the prince was a dad, a husband, or a heavenly father. I knew that my heavenly father loved me. I just wish I'd stayed true to that knowledge. Mom, they have this new store at the mall. It's got all these nice. <laughs> Mom? <laughs> Mom? It's Nanny. She's. <laughs> Mom! Mom, what is it? Is Nanny hurt? Is she okay? Honey, she's. She's gone. What? <laughs> she can't be. I just saw her this morning. She's fine. <laughs> I was 12 when Nanny died. The sudden loss of her presence left more than just a hole in my everyday life. It left a hole in me that I didn't know how to fill. I started pushing away from my family, my home, everything that had once been so dear to my heart. Because if Nanny could be snatched away so easily, what else could be? It was a little premature to become a rebellious teenager, but that didn't stop me. Everyone buckle? Yep. Sure am. Now I am. Are you sure we won't get busted? My parents are at a funeral. Do those things ever go quickly? Good point. Woohoo! That was so much fun. Yeah, we gotta do this again. <gasps> Is that your folks in the driveway? Oh no. Uh-oh. Now there will be another funeral. I'm so dead. Should I just keep driving? No, you'll be in more trouble. Well, what should I do? Just pull up behind them. That Saturday afternoon of sixth grade, after I pulled my father's Malibu up behind my mother's car in the driveway, he calmly told my friends to go home. Once we got in the house, he proceeded to whip me with his belt, buckle. A couple dozen wax left welts on my back and bruises all over my body which told my young brain I was worthless. I was a punching bag and I have no value. Doubtless these were all visible when I attended gymnastics, but no one reported such things back then. I resented my father after that. And walking away from my house and its occupants motivated me more than any party ever could. When my father stepped out of my life, giving into the alcohol and gambling addiction that destroyed their marriage, my young heart began to seek love and affirmation wherever I could find it. It was the perfect storm. You like her hair? Mm, a little too poofy. Is there even such a thing? <laughs> <laughs> so, what's up with you and Trent? Well, we, uh... uh we... What? Wait, you mean you... <gasps> uh-huh. Joanna! We're 15! And he's out of school. So? He's 19? So what? He's mature. <laughs> so, what, you think that makes you an adult too? I sure don't feel like a teenager anymore. Really? I think I'm a woman. Oh, sounds like it. I got a great idea. What? You can lose your virginity to Trent too. That'd be so cool. Mom's always working and hardly here. I could pull it off. I'm sure you could. <laughs> So, in my youthful foolishness, Trent and I had sex. I thought on some level it would make me feel special, more mature. But that weekend at a party with some girlfriends, after we had all taken downers, my friend Lisa leaned over to tell me she had slept with Trent too. I crumbled on the inside as I felt alone, isolated and thrown away, like a part of me had been robbed of something. Suddenly the attention I received from Trent wasn't so special anymore especially after he ignored me. So, trying to fill the emotional void, I reasoned if I wasn't getting attention from Trent, I was going to get it from someone else. Look, Joanna, see that townhouse on the end? Yeah? That's Richard's place. He's 24. He already owns it. <laughs> he must have a good job. Wow, is that him on the bike? No, that's his roommate, Jay. He's 23. He's gorgeous. <laughs> Wait, do you see Bobby and Tommy? They live in the next townhouse over. They're pushing 30. How'd you meet them all? They like to party and I stop by. Can you introduce me? Of course. Oh, and they have a lot of drugs and are a good time. So who's off limits? Which one do you like? Jay. 
the biker boy. I was attracted to Jay the most. Even after learning he was an ex-con, I didn't care. I'd do whatever he told me to do, even stirred up his crack cocaine to shoot it up his arm. I did all the drugs I could, only stayed away from the needles. But Joanna and I didn't really care who was home or when, we slept with all four of those men whenever they were available. But ultimately, in my effort to act like a big girl, I felt used and ashamed. If only I knew then, it was just the tip of the iceberg. Cynthia, I, I get how you can sleep through my class, but how you can sleep through the bell, I... Oh my. I'm sorry, Mrs. Turner. I'm just feeling queasy this morning. Mm-hmm. I, um, I remember what that feels like. Here, throw up in this. Thanks. And I've got some saltine crackers, too. Realizing I was pregnant and didn't know who the father was should have slowed me down to face my behavior, but it didn't in the least. That weekend, I partied, shoplifted, and went with the friend's mother to post bail to get her out of jail. Days went by before I found an opportune moment to break the news. <sighs> Did you sleep well? Fine. Mom? I'm... I might be pregnant. Mom? I suspected as much. You did? Yeah, I haven't been using products lately. Oh. We need to get you an abortion. Mom borrowed $300 for the abortion and paid in cash. A friend of hers came with us to the clinic and I was checked in under her friend's name. We didn't want a paper trail or for dad to ever find out. The staff treated me like I was just next in queue, which I guess I was. When I woke up, it was done. I kept thinking, I just killed my child. Even when we sat at Denny's to eat. When we got home, mom realized she didn't have her house key, so I scaled the railing to the balcony to get in through the glass door. That night I cried a little, but it was more over the fact that I could have been living with the father, who I had hoped was Jay. No one told me to slow down but I probably wouldn't have listened had they tried. Folks, we'll get back to Cynthia's story in just a moment, but first, I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 71st year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of, well, supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, as you can hear, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we're able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link if there's one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org. That's unshackledpodcast.org, and then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check, Unshackled, we take checks. You mail that check to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now, back to part one of the true story of Cynthia Wenz. <laughs> While I was in 10th grade, my behavior caught the attention of two teachers who tried to intervene. Basically, the plan was to keep me busy so there wouldn't be time for trouble. So I joined the swim team. Swimming completely wore me out and I stopped using drugs, started babysitting the coach's three kids, and listened as he challenged me to think more highly of myself. For the first time, I believed someone truly saw me and who I was beneath my behavior. In my brokenness, I thought the next step was a physical relationship because isn't that what's expected? Don't I have to pay or conquer the physical to matter to someone? So I entered into an affair with him. Hey, I want to talk to you. 
Huh? Do you know who I am? Uh, I... I I'm Mrs. Norris, you know, the swim coach's wife. You know, the man you're sleeping with. I, I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, really? Because I've had this suspicion the last three years and tried to put it behind me as we had three little kids. But I can't ignore it anymore. You'll have to talk to Steve. I, I mean, coach. Oh, yeah, first name basis, right. I know. You were in San Antonio with him last weekend. I was here. Well, the same perfume I smell on you now was all over his clothes. Listen, lady, if you can't keep your man in your own bed, that's on you. I got things to do. Hey, don't you turn your back to me. You pay for this. I avoided drugs in high school, but mostly because of my affair with Coach Norris. And pregnancy wasn't an issue since he'd gotten a vasectomy. But when the truth came out about us, he got fired. His wife divorced him and he had to move out of state to get hired again. I was sucked back into the lifestyle I thought I had escaped. Promiscuity, drugs, anorexia, bulimia, anything to dull the ache inside. The feeling of isolation and shame. But soon I was off to a North Texas college and a man who would make me forget about a lot of things. Oh, isn't this life? It sure is. It's nothing better than listening to the waves rolling at night. Driving down here was such a good idea. I love Daytona. Well, my girl deserves the best spring break. <laughs> and a house on whatever hill of your family's land she wants. <laughs> <laughs> and that too. Well, I knew you loved me when you let me drive your Beamer. I can't help it. There's uh, something about you that drives me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we need to start planning a trip for this summer. Anywhere you want to go? Hmm, there's a whole world out there I haven't seen. And so little I have. In my four-year affair with Coach, I never had to worry about protection. So I hadn't even considered using it with Don. After spring break, I started missing periods and discovered I was pregnant again. I called Don, certain he'd know what to do. After all, he thought I hung the stars. Pick up, pick up. Hello? Don? Yeah, hey babe. Hi. What are you up to? Not a lot. What's the matter? You don't sound happy. Well, I just found out I'm pregnant. Don? Yeah, I'm here. I thought you had it covered. That you were on the pill or something. Well, I wasn't, so I guess we should have talked about it. What do you want to do? I just thought I'd tell you and let you know, and we'd figure it out. Oh, you thought we'd get married? I don't know. You've had an abortion before, right? Years ago, when I was too young. I'll send you money and you can go have one again. That's what you want? How much was it? Do you know? Mom borrowed money for the abortion and paid in cash. Okay. Give me your mail and address, and I'll send you the money. Where was that future with me that Don talked about? All the things he said and plans we made suddenly vanished. Had he only said those things just to make me feel close to him? So we'd feel comfortable sleeping together? I tried to swallow down those feelings of rejection. But after receiving the money, I never heard from him again. Once more tossed aside, thrown into the heap pile, looking for love in all the wrong places. I told myself it was for the best. And with all the drugs I'd been using, the fetus was likely damaged and the abortion needed to be done. Much like before, it didn't slow my lifestyle down. In fact, it twirled the craziness out of control. Cynthia, it's two in the morning. You think I care what time it is? Whoa, Cynthia, put the gun down. Don't tell me what to do. What, you want some drugs? Look, there's crystal in the kitchen. I don't want your drugs. I certainly didn't want your gonorrhea. What? 
I thought we were careful and it wouldn't spread. Well, it did. Well, calm down. Let's just calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. Just, just forget it. Cynthia. <laughs> I lost my vision from the infection and went to the hospital where I learned the list of STDs I had accumulated and went through their treatments. No wonder I began slipping into depression. For the first time in my life, I started to feel the gravity of my decisions, if only briefly. I got to stop. Now I can't even stop crying for losing my job that I couldn't stop crying at. <laughs> this is wrecking my life. And I killed my baby. <laughs> I ended God's creation within me. Oh my God. Oh my God. What am I going to do? I began working with a counselor who wanted me to see that men couldn't fill the void in my life. I scheduled cry times throughout my days and had to force myself to turn off the tears when it was time. Slowly, the tears subsided. I graduated college and hoped life would straighten itself out with time. It didn't. Julie, buckle your belt. Hmm? Your belt. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You look like you can hardly hold your eyes open. <laughs> because I can't. Had you kept up on shots, lightweight, we'd both be in the same boat this morning. <laughs> You're such a wreck. Me? How many guys did you sleep with? Shh so loud. Well, I think it was at three, but there are two nights where I can't remember much after getting ready for the parties. Oh gosh, <laughs> we are the poster children for what happens in Mexico stays in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I sat in mass and told God one day that if he was real, he'd have to show me. And I'd do my part and show up every week. And I think he was answering me. Contrary as it seems, given my way of living, I felt like I was getting closer to Jesus, even though I didn't really know him. I was actually trying to minister to the cheerleaders my friend and I were now coaching, and felt I was growing up a little. So what is this I heard about you and Gordon? I wish everyone would quit talking about him. Why? You broke up your engagement with Travis for him, didn't you? Yeah, I just... I think it was the commitment that freaked me out the most. Well... How do you feel about Gordon, then? When I think about him, driving his BMW, owning his own business, sharing our Italian history, our legacy. Ma, we'd have Italian babies. Those are all nice things. I just feel like for once in my life, there'd be security, security, security. No wonder he has appeal. If Gordon was only half as good as I convinced myself he was, things would have worked out great but there were some things I couldn't get over. <gasps> what are you doing? What? You can't light a joint in the church parking lot. Are you crazy? It's not that big a deal. Not that big a deal? Of course it is. How can you say that? Because this is what I'm going to do all afternoon. Smoke joints, drink, and watch a few games on the TV. <gasps> are you serious? Well, I'm sorry if you don't agree with the ways I choose to spend my time relaxing. I work hard, and I deserve it. <sighs> Never mind. Boy, was I glad I had Stephen for a boss at work. He felt unappreciated by his wife, and I was having a horrible experience dating Gordon. So, we commiserated. I hadn't meant to get intimate with him, but you know what they say. One thing led to another, and honestly, I was still living for myself. Tune in next time for the conclusion of Cynthia Wentz's story. Listening friend. If you, like Cynthia, have a wake of recklessness behind you, you can be delivered from that ruin if you put your trust in Jesus Christ. No matter where your life has taken you, when you trust in Christ, you can be set free. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 promise that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 
If you need help in this crucial decision, we encourage you to get in touch with us here at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607, or call 1-888-NEED-HIM. Now, we love hearing from our listeners here on the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, so send us your questions and we'll answer them here. It can be something you're curious about or just something you want to share with us. All you have to do is write us at podcast at unshackled.org or call and leave us a message at 312-281-1264. We'd love to hear from you. Now, before we get to our sweepstakes drawing info, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You can even share it or tell a friend. We'd also love for you to review or rate our podcast, and don't forget to check out our other podcasts on this same platform, Unshackled Daily Devotionals and Unshackled in Person. We appreciate your input and involvement in our ministry. And again, please consider supporting us so we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. All right, the prize for this sweepstakes contest is another beautiful wooden scripture plaque. The verse on this one is Psalm 5110, which says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. This is a gorgeous little thing, especially if you're looking for daily inspiration from scripture. You will love this authentic wooden plaque. The plaque has been sawn from a tree branch or log and cut in such a way as to retain as much of the bark around the perimeter as possible. If you'd like a peek at this scripture plaque, you're welcome to visit our podcast website, unshackledpodcast.org, and stop by the audio drama page for the picture. Now, unfortunately, folks, we are only able to mail this plaque to locations within the United States, so our drawing is limited to U.S. addresses. But if you reside in the U.S., all you have to do to enter our sweepstakes drawing is call 312-281-1264 or email podcast at unshackled.org and give us your name, phone number, and email. That's your name, phone number, and email. The winner of the sweepstakes for this beautiful scripture plaque will be announced December 19th. But the deadline for entry is December 3rd. That's December 3rd as the deadline for entry. We look forward to hearing from you. And next time... Uh, Cynthia, why didn't you say you were pregnant? Oh, I'm not. These results are highly reliable. You're pregnant. I can't be pregnant! Finding herself repeating the same mistakes from her past, Cynthia wondered how she had so easily become a statistic. So, do you want to schedule pregnancy care or have a DNC performed? I don't know. Like I said before, I don't even know which one is the father. But a botched abortion led to one of the grandest gifts of her life. Cindy, I've looked at the ultrasound scan and the baby is moving so quickly. What baby? I had a DNC two weeks ago. See that little figure squirming and wiggling? That's your baby. And God would call on her to educate and support women like herself. We can, and many of us must, be a first responder in the lives of the young women around us. Don't miss this remarkable conclusion of Cynthia Wenz's true story, coming soon on Unshackled. Heard in part one of the true story of Cynthia Wenz were Amanda Markeski, Jeff Parker, Demetrius Troy, Jennifer Dimmitt, Mary Jo Faraci, and Nicole Simeka. Original music, Don Badorf. Sound effects, Demetrius Troy. Sound assistant, Martin Robinson. Recording engineer, David Pierczynski. Audio engineer, Michael Kahn. Script, Kylie Hammond. That's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ.